What should the West End goal be? You mentioned the word victory. Uh, what is that our interest in, in, in Ukraine? And what does it look like? I think, I think that's a great question. I think we need to think about it more than we maybe are. I think what we need and need to focus on is a strategically viable Ukraine which can be economically successful. We need to be sure that the outcome of this war is not a repeat of 2014, is not a ceasefire and hostilities um, then resumed in, what was it, eight years. Um, and, and the other outcome, so I think that, number one, and we need to real like, for people who were following Ukraine from 2014 onwards, one thing that was very striking is every time the Ukrainians were making economic progress in that interregnum, you had renewed Russian activity along the line of conflict in the East. There was a clear, intentional, well-organized Russian effort to make Ukraine not economically viable not investable. And so we have to be sure that that doesn't happen. The second what? thing that I think we just very quickly, Matt, mm. super fast, that I think we need to think about when we think about Ukraine is the demonstration effect. Um, we need to realize that what is happening in Ukraine has a real impact on what countries think they can get away with in the world. Um, and so Ukraine's success and the failure of this gross Russian violation of international law is important for the safety and security of all of us. I think Beijing is watching very, very closely. And if we support the Ukrainians enough, the consequences are going to be really, really positive for the whole world, very far from Ukraine. There's a reason that Japan has taken such a strong and laudable position in support of Ukraine. The Japanese understand this. What's our end goal for Moscow? And do you think that there's a solution for Ukraine um, uh, without a regime change in Moscow, as President Biden uh, said last year in Warsaw? I think it's up to the Russians to figure out what they want to do inside Russia. Uh, I think it's our job to make clear to them that their illegal actions cannot stand. Um, and I think it is our job to also make clear to them that they're gonna have to pay for the devastating damage, not only to Ukraine, but to the world economy. I mean, this happened just as we were getting past the COVID recession and the COVID supply chain shock. And then you had Russia invading Ukraine which added a huge inflationary shock to the whole world, particularly painful on food prices. This has caused huge misery in the global south, and we should not forget that either. Do you, I mean, you obviously led the way in uh, freezing the central bank assets, and uh, do you think that now's the time to move ahead to try and lay claim to those assets, even if people are worried about the precedent or questions about international law? I think freezing the assets of the Russian Central Bank was really important, and I think Janet Yellen and Mario Draghi, um, if I had to name two people, um, played a really important role, as actually did the government of Ukraine. The Ukrainians are very sophisticated about this stuff. They had really good ideas. Um, I do think when it comes to the Russian assets, we need to think about going from freezing the assets to confiscating the assets. Um, we have legislation domestically in Canada that gives us this authority. Um, that legislation was part of our 2022 budget implementation bill. Uh, it has cross-party support, and we are moving forward with two specific asset seizures. On the assets of the Russian Central Bank, um, I think there is a lot of international discussion about this. And I do think we need to think really hard and seriously about it. I think that Phil Zelico is here, um, and he's a really useful person to talk to because of his experiences with the assets, uh, with the central bank assets of Iraq, which I think is an interesting precedent to think about. And I think also, you know, we have to, 
um, you know, I am an elected political leader. Um, I face the voters, and that's a really important conversation. And, you know, speaking for myself, and like a lot of Canadians, like they come up to me on the street, I normally don't have security, I'm a person very accessible to a regular Canadian person. And when I'm like, I go for a run in my neighborhood, people often will stop me and they will say, what are you doing to help Ukraine? What are you doing about Russia? You have to do more, this is really important. Um, and you know, when the war ends, there's gonna be a big bill to pay for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Um, for people here who are in elected office, um, let's think about the conversation we're gonna be having with our voters. Um, and they are going to say to us, certainly Canadian ones are gonna say, I'm prepared to help Ukraine, I believe in it, but I think there are billion, hundreds of billions of dollars of Russian assets that currently are frozen, and isn't it just for some of those assets to be used to rebuild Ukraine? 